In today's tutorial, let's do the big stitch hat. This is a really amazing hat. Let's begin to do this project next. Welcome back to the Crochet Crowd as well as Yarnspirations.com. I'm your host Mikey. Today we're going to work on this big stitch hat that you see here. It's a combination of two yarn balls. One is the Peyton's Classic Wool Roving and the other one sits Peyton's Color Wool and together they make up the design that you see here. I love this hat. I live in the country here with Daniel and I would see something like this definitely on the streets here in town as well as in the coffee shop and more and of course I see trendy city folk actually wearing hats like this as well because it is wool it is warm and here in the country it is sometimes more about the warmth than it is fashion but I love this particular hat because it has fashion and warmth all combined into one. Let's uh, review a little bit more about this project and let's then get started after that. So for today's project you're going to need one ball of Peyton's Classic Wool Roving and one ball of Peyton's Color Wool and together they work up really quite amazing and we're going to be alternating. We're also going to need a six and a half millimeter size K crochet hook today as well as an eight millimeter size L crochet hook today. The brim that you saw in the photograph is actually done in the smaller size that you see here. So I've already started working on it behind the scenes and so what we're going to do is that we're going to be changing the color every two lines in the uh, the brim itself and because we've used the smaller kind of yarn um, it's going to be nice and flexible as well as elastic. So one side looks completely different than the other. So the one side looks like it's completely knitted in rows and the other side is just the back end of what appears to be knitting. It's almost reminds me a little bit of Tunisian but it's not Tunisian in any way. So today what we're going to do is that we're going to start on the brim and then we're going to then work our way up and this hat is absolutely amazing and what I did for myself is that because I'm not a woman my head's fatter than it should be. <laughs> you know me and my big head. I actually have done this brim so that it actually fits around me so I've added a few extra rows in order to do that. So you can also do that for yourself if you need to compensate if you got lots of brains like me. <laughs> okay so let's get started and uh, let's stop with the jokes. We'll talk to you in just a moment and let's get started on the brim. <laughs> So let's get started on the brim. This is what we're going for. I did this behind the scenes to save myself from filming and sitting at my desk so long. So I did this at nighttime last night in bed and what I have to do here is you have to do a brim that is 18 and a half inches in length and of course I did a, a measurement around my own head and I've kind of added a few extra rows because I have a fat head. So <laughs> so what I have here is that if you need to change the, the rows then you can do so. So what we have is that we have two rows of the natural which is uh, the Peyton's Roving which is the regular kind of a sheepish color and then we have the color wool for two rows and so what we're doing is that we're changing out these as we go and you're gonna notice that when I go to do that we're gonna carry the yarn across. This where we're carrying is eventually gonna be in the top part of the hat. See how this side looks really quite finished? This side not so much. So this side will be the side that ends up in going toward the top of the hat and we're gonna stitch around it and so that it's gonna get hidden anyway. So one thing I love about the Peyton's color wool, look at how the colors transition on its own and it's really quite amazing. It's not a hard pattern to do and the other side looks very different just like so. So you can decide what you side you like better. Of course I, I like this side a lot. I like it really a lot. So let's begin and we're gonna use our smaller crochet hook today and let's grab up our Peyton's uh, one first this color and then we're gonna then switch over to the color wool. So we're gonna begin uh, just for a disclaimer this is a six millimeter size J crochet hook. It says to use K. I'm a loose crocheter so I've downsized one hook size in order to make it work for me. So let's begin. We're going to create a slip knot. I'm using a generous tail here so that I can sew that in afterward if I have to and I just want to make sure I got enough. So we're gonna have a slip knot just like this. So what we have to do is that we have to chain 10. So just rotating back. So 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9, and 10. So there is one there and then we're gonna start and start doing the repeat pattern from this point. So from this point you're gonna go second chain from the hook. So count one and two, go to the second and turn it around and get the back loop only and insert in and you're going to slip stitch yourself across. Yes, slip stitching is the entire uh, brim here. So you're gonna pull through and through. Now if you've ever slip stitched in your life you gotta make sure that you are being um, you might have to use a little bit of practice just to calm yourself down from tension. Um, being tense with doing slip stitching is not a good thing. It's harder to get into. So you're just gonna slip stitch yourself all the way across and so if we chained 10 
and we did second chain from the hook there's a total of nine stitches going across this brim at all times all the way down. So we're just coming along the back side and we're going to slip stitch. When we get to the other side what's gonna happen is that we're gonna add the color wool and then we're going to go back down and back up and then switch back to the wool and I'll show you how to do that as well. So we're coming near to the top okay coming all the way if you're ever self doubting you can always just count back and make sure that you can count nine stitches. So I got one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, and nine. So what I want you to do is that you do have nine so I want you to back out one okay. So just back out so that you look like you're about to finish and I want you to grab your color wool okay. Just make a loop okay. Leave an extra long string and I want you to pull that strand through to finish that stitch. Okay, so every time you're about to switch yarn you have to do it right on the end. So let's turn our work and let's begin next step. So we're gonna turn our work kind of sideways a little bit and you need to chain one. So one and coming in to the back um, loop only. So remember in crochet there's two strands. The, the front one is the front loop, the back one is the back loop and coming into the one right underneath it you want to slip stitch again. So you're gonna slip stitch all the way across for nine. Now you're gonna notice to yourself at this point those yarn strands look a little bit loose here. I'm gonna show you how to play with those and adjust those and you need to adjust those as you go because if I go any further once I get beyond this color I'm not gonna be able to adjust anything. So coming along the back end or back loops only you're going to slip stitch. So on one side the slip stitching will appear like you've physically knitted your, your item which makes it very attractive in my opinion. We have another hats like this. The five star beanie hat is uh, one that's done like this as well and really it's a lot more work to do brims like this but the reality is is that um, it does look amazing and you can't deny it. So you're gonna slip stitch all the way to the last one. So coming into the last one like that. So your color changing will always be on the one side. It will never be on the other side. That's why one side looks more perfect than the other. So to go back in the other direction you're gonna chain up one back loop only. You're gonna make your way back up. Do you see that? So that's all this pattern is. It's just down and back with one color, down and back with another and the trick is to knowing when to change your colors at the top. So I'm just gonna take my time and get myself to the top. Now I've done the other brim last night um, and because of that I'm more relaxed than I would have been when I started the brim yesterday. So because of that you get used to being a lot more looser if you have to be. <laughs> There's a great time to be loose and this is one of them. Okay so let it all hang out and let's continue. Now here's the last one right here. Now if you finish it then that means that you're gonna commit to this color once again. So to drop it what you have to do is that just let it fall out of your hand, grab the wool. Now before you grab, or sorry grab the other color. So before you grab it I want you to just tug on it a little bit and it will tighten up this stitch right underneath and then use that to finish like so. And now we're gonna use that to go down and back. So we chain up one and then down the back loop for slip stitching all the way down. So you'll notice that this just pulled a massive loop right there. We fix that when we come back up just like I just pulled on that other color now. So you're just gonna go down and back, down and back, down and back for all your colors all the way down. So I can tell right now because I was working on it yesterday that this side that I'm looking at is the side that is gonna be the visible side when you're wearing it. The other side is gonna be looking like the back end of knitting. So at certain points what I would do is randomly count make sure you only have your nine. Coming into the end once you get to the end chain one and then come back up to the top where the color changing is happening. So I'm just gonna review. I'm pulling things snug again and then I'm gonna leave it to you. So you gotta do 18 and a half inches. If you have to adjust then adjust and then we're gonna move on to the top of the hat. This took me about hmm, I almost wanna say about an hour, maybe an hour and a half to do the entire brim but I was just kinda watching TV anyway so I wasn't too gung-ho uh, 
diving right into it really quickly. And also I don't wanna be too quick with this process because the quicker you go with this one, the tighter your tension can be and make it a lot harder for yourself. So you'll, you'll probably slow yourself down anyway. So just take your time. This is one where the turtle wins the race at the end. Okay, so I'm gonna come into the last stitch that's available to me. Okay, and I wanna pull on, I wanna drop that one and pull on the other one. So watch this, see with this string's hanging out. So I'm gonna pull on it. Just don't reef down on it, just get it out of the way, but just pull on it and then finish it. So just go down and back. This is what the other side looks like here. This is what this side looks like here. Okay, so just go down and back and get your 18 and a half inches and meet me back here and then we're gonna get started and then we're gonna play along this row here which is the top of the row that you're seeing right here. Okay, so this one looks finished. This one is gonna have the carrying over yarn at the top. So meet me back here and we'll start then the top of the hat from that point. So I now have my 18 and a half inches done. You're not to fasten off your yarn yet. Um, I have so because I wanted to not to crack open a new ball to show you how to do the beginning of the brim. So what technically you're supposed to do here is that at the end you're supposed to chain one and you're supposed to bring your sides together and going into one side here, okay, you go right directly through to the other side like so and then just wrap the hook and do and slip stitch it all the way back through. So just going in, so pull through and through like so. You, so what you can just do is advance the next stitch going into the next one on the other side, pull through and through. So what you can either do it like that or you can whip stitch it if you wanted to. It's completely up to you. Um, because you have nine stitches across there will be nine stitches going down. So it's just a nice easy way to be able to do this. Now you will notice that the model if you looked at the photo carefully is that the model has her hat flipped up and you will notice that the side that you're looking at right now is the flipped up side. So what you're doing here is that you're putting the seam on the on this particular um, side of the project here so that it looks awesome and it maintains the pattern as well. Okay so you're slip stitching all the way across and what I'm gonna do then is that I'm gonna take my darning needle and hide in all the loose ends but then your brim is officially done. So just tighten everything up and get everything out of the way just like so. So there is the end just like there. Okay so what I want to do next is that I want to um, now just take my, take the string and I'm just gonna cut it a little bit shorter and I'm gonna use a darning needle and I'm just gonna pull it through and I'm gonna use a darning needle to hide this in. Okay, so the trick for darning needles is that if you go in and out of your work three times you will never see it. So just glide it right underneath the stitches. Okay, so right into the fibers itself. Um, because this is wool this will most likely never fall out on you. Okay, so pulling in, make sure you don't pull it to the point where you're um, altering the pro uh, project, uh, um, making it buckle. So that was two. Let's go one more time just for security. I'm probably gonna wear this hat. So I wanna finish it nicely. Okay, and then back through. So what I wanna do with the other strands that were um, currently on there, so you would have dropped um, other strands um, like the white. You wanna go back through your project and just get rid of and eliminate those out. So here's the white strand here. Okay, that was what we were working on. I'm just gonna cut it a bit shorter. So with your white strand just be conscious where you are and just going in and just gliding it only into the white section only. Just I'm gonna go all the way down right to the bottom. Therefore you'll never see it. So again I wanna be very conscientious of what I'm doing here. Not pulling things too tight. Okay, so just alter it if you have to. And I'm gonna go back up through that same color. Um, the needle is not hitting the other side so I don't see it on this side. I can feel it what's inside the project and I'm gonna go all the way back up to the top. And what I want to do again like before just go in and out three times.
So please do that for any of the loose ends that you have left in your project and then meet me back here and then we'll start doing the top of the hat together. So now what we're going to do is that with this side facing up you can see that this is where the yarn was carried. It's not as clean looking as this. So this is the base where your forehead would be that people can see. This is the back area where it's been put together just like so. This is the right side of the project. So if you look at it from this point of view then it works out pretty good. So now I want to start the top of the hat and where we need to work with is in the top area here. So you see that this is where we carried yarn. This side looks perfect. So this side is gonna be right above your eyebrows. And so then this side here will be working toward the top of the hat. This is where I did the join and this is where I wanna start. And what I've done is that I folded it in half and I placed a stitch marker on the opposite side right directly in half. I didn't count that, I just added out. What we have to do is that we have to get 41 single crochets around this rim. Now if you count each one of the sections, so if you counted each color as one and then two and three and four, there's more than 41. So you have to equally space this out. So what I do for myself is that I put a stitch marker halfway at this point. So I know that if I need to get 41 in this thing that I have to get from here to here in just 20 stitches and then I gotta get from here to here in 21 stitches to get 41 all the way around. So this stitch marker helps me just to keep an eye on things where I need to kind of speed up and slow down. So I'm going to use this color, the creek and I'm gonna create a slip knot to begin and I wanna join it right where I've done the join here. Okay, right in the back and just gonna go in with a slip stitch through, chain one and single crochet into the same one. I'm gonna leave this straggler down on top and trap it into position. So what I have to just do is that I just have to equally space uh, 20 stitches between here and the next stitch marker. So this will be two and so you just gotta eye it up and just kind of do what you think you need to do. So this is three and I'm just going in. This is four This is five, six, seven, eight, nine. I'm gonna let that straggler fall and ten. So now I have ten and I this is my stitch marker so I gotta get ten more in here before I get to the stitch marker if I wanna get my 20 all the way there. So it helps you just eye it out like that and I need you to do that all the way around. So one, two, three, four, five. Look how close you are to there. That was five and then just get six, seven, eight, nine and ten right at the stitch marker. So again this just takes practice and I've got now ten in there and I continue all the way around in the same fashion. So do that from this stitch marker then to the start is another twenty one. So just do it just how I showed you and I'll see you back here in just a moment. So once you're back all the way around I do have 41 in here. I'm just going to insert it into the first one here and what I want to do is that I wanna grab the other color and we're going to join that on. So just loop it out. Okay, a nice long tail there just so you can deal with it later. Pull through and through and now that finishes that round. So now we're done with this big crochet hook at this moment and or this uh, smaller crochet hook and now we're going to start going with the big stitch now at this point with an eight millimeter size L from this point. Just one thing before I let you go on this one. They're asking us to put in a stitch marker right in the last stitch okay that we just did the joining stuff with. So we what we have to just do then is that we have to make sure that we get it in okay and put your stitch marker in. I'm really not sure why at this moment so we just have to follow the instructions sometimes and just hope for the best. <laughs> so just uh, place in a stitch marker. It won't kill you anyway. So uh, let's continue along in the instructions. So let's bring back or bring in the eight millimeter size L crochet hook today. So now this one row is really simple. So this is row number one of doing the top of the hat. So we're gonna chain up three which counts as a double crochet and what we want to do in every stitch going all the way around. So this is part of this. This is where you slip stitch. See how it's worked into that? So we come to the next one and we're going to double crochet into each stitch going all the way around. 
that's as hard as this uh, row gets or round gets and it's just one double crochet into each. So you're gonna be using a bigger hook now so you'll notice that the stitches are gonna get very big and fluffy and that's exactly what you're, you're aiming for. So please just do one double crochet in each stitch going all the way around and I'll see you at the end of this round. So as I'm coming all the way back around I run into the stitch marker. That is my last stitch. Helps you identify it and what I want to do is that I want to just then join this to the top of the beginning chain three but when I go to join it I want to carry up the yarn that is the other color which is currently in behind and I wanna just before I pull through I wanna use that color to pull through to join it. So then it's ready for the next round. Okay I'm grabbing the other stitch marker by accident. So pull through and then just kinda pull things nice and snug and tight in the end. Okay so let's move along to row number two. So what we're gonna do now is that we're going to create crisscross front post double crochet. So we're gonna chain up two which counts as a stitch and we're gonna skip the next stitch and go to the second one over and we're gonna do a front post uh, double crochet. So let's just wrap the hook. So we're skipping the first one, go to the second, coming into the side of the post and out the other side, pull through, pull through two and two and finish it. And then what I need you to do is that we need to then come back and we're going to do um, this particular stitch here. Okay so we're just gonna come back and we're just gonna come in to the other one and pull through. Okay so you've just created what is called as a crisscross with front post double crochet. So what we're gonna do then skip the next one. Okay and just go to the second one over. Then just go to the one you skipped. Come back and do this one. Okay, so skip the next one and then do the come back to the one you skipped. So I want you to do that all the way around for this and this is gonna create some nice big bulky looking ideas and so then skip the next one and front post double crochet into the next and then come back to the one you skipped and then move on. So do that all the way around please. So I'm coming up all the way around and we are almost done at this round here and we're gonna switch back then to the other color at the top. So remember the chain two counts as a stitch so we just wanna go into the top of the chain two. Okay so what we're going to do is that before we finish that off I wanna grab the other color up. So I wanna grab this neutral and I wanna use that color to fasten and pull things shut. Okay. So what we're going to do is that we're gonna repeat the last two rounds until this area here from here measures to four inches tall. So what we just have to keep on doing at the top here is that I wanna keep repeating this pattern. So we have to finish off so that we're doing the crisscross. So when you get your four inches done, okay, the top row should here, should be this one here. Okay, so let's get you started once again. So do you remember how to do the other round? It was just simply chain up three which counts as a stitch and then we're just going to in every stitch going around it's just gonna be a double crochet. So you're gonna do that in every one around and then you're just gonna repeat the last row that you just did and keep repeating these two rows till you get your four inches and then meet me back here and we'll show you how to move along in this process and we're gonna get starting to get smaller as we get towards the top of the head. Okay so back and forth uh, with just rows number um, um, one and two in order to keep on the pattern. Okay so I'm back and I've now done my four inches. I'm pretty close to the four. I don't want to go anymore like I'm just off by a smidge you know just stretch it a little bit because um, if I try to do another repeat pattern um, you're looking at about an inch and a half to do that. So if I go another more it's gonna be way too big. So you gotta just use your best judgment. So now we're gonna move on and you can see now it's relatively um, square kind of looking. We've kind of narrowed it down at the top a little bit naturally through the stitch work itself. This hat is prettier than I thought. Um, it was nice on the model but actually when I see it in person I'm really quite excited about it. So let's uh, begin and we're gonna start shaping the top and there's only five rounds and it's gonna go really quickly. So let's begin to shape the top now. So with your cream color here, this is color B, we're going to chain three which counts as a double crochet and we're gonna double crochet then um, two together um, in the next one here. So the next uh, two stitches that we see we're just gonna put them together. So wrap the hook going into the next stitch, pull through, pull through two and hold, then wrap the hook again going into the next stitch, pull through, pull through two and hold. 
So now you got three loops on the hook, you yarn over and pull through all three. So those two just became one. So what we want to do then is then our repeat pattern for this whole thing is that the next two double crochets are by themselves. So one and two and then the next two are together. So wrap the hook going into the next stitch, pull through, pull through two and hold, wrap the hook going into the next stitch, pull through, pull through two and hold, wrap, pull through all three. And then the next two are by themselves again. So just double crochet the next two. So please re do that repeat pattern all the way around of two single or two double crochets to, uh, in a row and then two together. And I'll see you at the end of this row. So I'm coming up all the way around the final two stitches are just one double crochet each. Remember that you gotta tighten all this stuff back up uh, when you're coming all the way around because you, you don't have a second opportunity to do it in the future once you start playing with that. Once you uh, come all the way around you're just gonna slip stitch to the top. Remember to drop that color and bring back the next one. And so this secures it by pulling everything tight now. It secures it so it doesn't come loose later and it doesn't have any slack to play around with messing up your stuff. So that is the conclusion of round number one and so what we've done now is that you can start seeing it's gonna start coming around the top of the head. Let's move along to round number two using the other color and let's begin. So in round number two make sure you tighten everything back up is you're going to chain two and this is exactly what you already know. So what you gotta watch out for, see this, these things like this is two together in the last round. So this counts as only one st uh, stitch at this time. See how there's just one at the top. So what we're going to do is that we're going to do the crisscross pose but we're not gonna decrease anything on this round here but we have to look to the round below and make sure that we're not um, miss looking at anything. So we're gonna skip the first one which includes these two because they're only one and then come to the next one and do your crisscross. Okay, so you gotta watch that. So if you accidentally separate those crisscross, you're gonna create more stitches by accident. Okay, so here's a crisscross here. So you're just gonna go, okay, around both of them. And then this one here is the one you skipped over. So just keep an eye on those things. They're not, this is not a hard pattern. So there's two single, or uh, two double crochets standing by themselves in this particular moment. And that makes sense because every, uh, there was two double crochets that separated these ones that came together. So there's one that's together. So we just come to this one and then back to the other. So please do that all the way around. Just make sure you keep an eye on those ones that are two together. When you get all the way back around you just gotta slip stitch to the top of the beginning chain two. So when you go to do that make sure you grab that other color once again. I like how you don't have to keep changing colors and fastening off and on. It's just nice to be able to carry it. So let's uh, carry up and let's do round number three. So let's begin round number three. We're going to chain up three which counts as a double crochet. So this time around what's gonna happen is that the next two are together. Okay, so we know how to do that already. Perfect. And then what's gonna happen in this round is that the next one is gonna be double crochet by itself and then the next two are together. So that's the repeat pattern for this entire round is that one double crochet stands by itself and then the next two are together. And please do that same pattern going all the way around. So these two just became together. Oops, I keep skipping over because that's what I keep doing in the last one in the last round. So just put those two together and then the next one is just one double crochet by itself. Please do that all the way around and you're gonna notice it's really gonna start coming together at the top. Coming up all the way back around I got my two together and then I'm just going to join it to the top of the first chain three. Okay, so that sounds pretty good and I'm just gonna join it with, I'm just gonna join it with the slip stitch with the other color so I can be ready uh, once again. Just like so and make sure you pull everything nice and tight together again. So let's uh, begin round number four. Round number four, again very simple, it's just chaining up two and again what we're going to do is crisscross again so we make sure you watch for these ones that are together. That's only one stitch there now instead and just reach over and do your front post crossovers just like that. Okay, so just keep rotating around. It's gonna get quicker so this one's together so don't forget that and these are really gonna pull in nicely at this point. So please do your crisscrosses all the way around for round number four. We're almost done and I just finished that last crisscross round and now we're gonna move up to round number five which is the final round and then we're just gonna sew together the remaining top piece. So let's uh, just begin. We're gonna chain three which counts as a double crochet and then every 
um, stitch going around is going to be two together. So just, just starting in the first one, put those two together and just keep doing that all the way around for this one. So there's no uh, singles that stand by themselves. It also two together all the way around. Meet me back here in just a moment and I'm gonna show you how to fasten off the top and then we have a pom pom to make in order to really kind of give this uh, project some conclusion. So meet me back here in just a moment. So now just come all the way back around. I'm just gonna slip stitch it to the top of the chain three and what I wanna do is I wanna cut an extra long length here and we're gonna use this as a sewing to, to bring the top to, uh, to conclusion. Now the other color is just hanging in there and what we want to do, let's just pull this through here. So it's out of the way. So the other color is just sitting in limbo because we haven't done anything with it. So what I want to do before we do anything is that we want to secure that into position first. So we're gonna just use a darning needle and I'm just gonna lock it into position underneath. We still have So just folding it so that you can see the project and I just want you to come in and out of the stitches. Staying on this side of the hat, don't ever go to the front side at all so you don't see it and you just wanna kinda tie it in a little mini knot right at the top. So just put it through and this is wool so the fibers tend to lock onto each other really quite nicely cause that's what they naturally do. So that's kind of out of the way and now we want to address then closing the top. So now we can just safely trim that. Pull that out and let's grab our other strand here that we had and we wanna close up that hole. So feeding the yarn onto the darning needle what we want to do is just pull everything nice and snug and I want you to go in and out of these stitches on the top only and like a clothesline kind of idea just kind of pull it through and just keep going in and out of the stitches all the way around. And at the very end what we're gonna do is we're gonna pull on that and it's gonna close the top and then we got a pom pom to make with the remainder of the yarn that we have available left on the ball. And you're gonna notice that there's not a lot of yarn left over on the, the color wool itself. There's less yardage on that ball. So if you use both of them at the same time as, we're, uh, as I'll demonstrate is that you can get a really nice thick ball of uh, pom pom on the top just like it shows in the model sample. So you're gonna come up all the way around. Now just gently kind of pull on this and pull it shut. Like so. Okay. And then just coming diagonally across. If you don't want a pom pom that's up to you. It's your creativity. Um, I think it looks finished with a pom pom. I'm a huge pom pom lover. Those that have been following me for a long time. I, I love pom poms. I have a big green one on the one that I technically wear in the winter time and uh, people compliment it all the time um, as well. Okay so now this is pretty much in and I can safely cut that out. So I'm gonna show you how to make the pom pom. Just really kind of very homemade. If you would like to use tools in order to do it or a cardboard that's uh, completely up to you. But this is what the hat looks like at this point. Um, really quite nice and let's uh, begin to do the pom pom next. Okay so now it's time to make the pom pom and the pom pom is really homemade. This is what the hat looks like. I'm really quite proud of it to be honest with you. Tried it on. It fits like a snug like a bug. So, so it looks great. I love the brim. The brim's fabulous. If you want to turn it up you can and uh, it looks really kind of amazing on both sides. So I like how it looks like it's knitted. So I'm just gonna grab some sock yarn here. A nice stronger yarn and I want to grab the remaining of the balls. So this is what I have left here off camera. So I have a lot more of this. There's more yardage on the Peyton's uh, classic roving than the color wool. There's more work and, and colors and, and manufacturing involved so therefore there's not the same yardage. So what we have here is that I wanna pull both of these strings together just right from the ball and using my hand. If you wanna use cardboard that's completely up to you but it's suggests to use your hand and what I want to do is that I'm gonna put um, just it in my hand and I'm gonna wrap it. Actually I'm gonna do this hand. It's easier for me. So I'm just gonna wrap. I'm, I don't wanna be too tight about it. I just wanna kind of just make sure there's no tension and I'm just wrapping so that they're both together. Okay so now I'm done here. 
So what I want to do is just safely lay it down and I wanna cut that strand that is coming from the other ball. So I still have a little bit left over here. I can use that for another project, not a problem. So what I wanna do is that I wanna just safely fold this in half. Okay, and I wanna use my sock yarn and I wanna just lay it down on top of the sock yarn right in the halfway spot and I wanna tie around. Okay, so I'm just gonna pull everything nice and tight. Sock yarn is exceptionally strong and I'm gonna wrap around the other side. Just turn it over. So what I like to do is it just, I tie the initial one just to get to the tension that I wanna get to and then I take another one which I have on the side there and I do it again and that will get it even tighter. So because this is wool, chances that these fibers are gonna lock together anyway so it's, it's probably never gonna come out on you. So I'm just gonna tie this into a knot and I'm gonna leave it hanging from there and I'm gonna use that, this string in order to put it to the top of the hat. So let's go again, just making sense of these strings. So just laying it down, turning it over. So now some people want every string to be absolutely perfect. I'm not one of those people. I like the imperfections of pom-poms versus um, picture perfect. Again, that's my own personal choice and you can exercise whatever makes you happy as well. Okay, so now that that's done, all I'm just gonna do now is that I'm gonna take my scissors, do not cut these strands that will be holding it to the top of the hat and all you're just gonna do now is just start cutting along the top and the pom-pom will open right up for you. Okay, so what I'm gonna do, it's out of control at this moment. <laughs> so what I'm gonna do is that I'm gonna feed the string using a crochet hook on the underside of the hat and I'm gonna pull these strings through. So folding it inside out, I can then see where the two strands went through, like so. And what I want to do is I want to use both of these strands and tie it snug to the top of the hat. So these are in two different spots here in the top. Pull it nice and snug and tie. Okay, so now I can just safely cut that down. So now here's what it looks like at the top of the hat. So it's pretty big, it's really big. So what I want to do then is that I wanna come back to this thing and start shaping it. So all I'm just gonna do is just kinda eye things up, and just look for it, just give it good shakes. Just see what's, what's missing, what, what's, where do you need the trim, is there any loose ones coming out. And just kinda just eye it up and just kinda make decisions that make sense for you. So you may think this ball is too big. <laughs> it might be a little bit too big, but that's okay. I love pom-poms. I think pom-poms are so much fun. Um, as a child, I always had a pom-pom hat. Um, it was the trend and I guess I'm 42 now and I still like pom-pom hats. I think they make for a dull winter to be a lot more exciting in my opinion. Um, I know, I'm kind of crazy that way. So I'm just safely just shaping, just taking my time. And again, if you think it's too big, then you can always do something about it and make it thinner. The other thing that you can do with these, because it is wool, you can kind of really shake them up and um, make them really quite solid as well. Like just really give it a good hard time like this and it'll kind of like get all the fibers to kind of mix with each other as well and then you can have a really kind of a cool idea. So this is how you would do one of these hats. I hopefully that you enjoy. Um, please uh, enjoy this free tutorial. Um, I think this is a really kind of a cool hat and I think you're gonna have a lot of fun with the designs. And of course if you don't like pom-poms or whatever, you don't need one, it's up to you. It's your creativity and it's your crochet. So you have to enjoy the process as you go. Till next time, I'm Mikey on behalf of the Crochet Crowd as well as yarnspirations.com. Have a great day and we'll see you again real soon. Bye-bye.